welcome to the farmstead. Appreciate you being here with me today. It's a little bit of a goofy day. Got the house to myself. It's actually quite dreary and cold and raining and just outside. Got the fire going, got some laundry going. You'll probably hear that humming or rumbling in the background. Just ignore that. But again, thanks for being here. I thought I'd bring you along today. Sean's been requesting some granola bars. A few of you have asked for the recipe, so I thought today I'd just bring you along. You can either cook along with me. I will post the ingredients uh, in the uh, description down below or cook at your leisure. It is an easy recipe, easy to customize, but yeah, this is mine. So I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. Here we go. Oh, I set my coffee back here. The first thing I do, nine by 13 pan. I am going to stick a butter and I am going to grease this or butter this. You could use olive oil, you could use canola oil. Um, you can use vegetable spread, which I know some of you out there use. But I prefer butter. But yeah, you just wanna make sure you get it buttered up on all your sides, like so. And put that to the back. And then you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Okay, we got that going. Put our butter over here. We're going to go ahead and put our dry ingredients in uh, a couple bowls. So in this bowl, I already have pre-measured my mixed um, dried fruit and nuts. Now, I make my life a lot easier. You can buy separate nuts and fruits that you enjoy. I enjoy this one. It's easy, we get it at Costco. Sam sells a similar one. I'm sure Walmart also sells a similar one. It's just trail mix. So um, it's important that you don't get uh, roasted, like uh, salted and roasted almonds and put those in. I did that once and because they were already so roasted when they cooked in the granola in the oven, it wasn't a very good taste. So um, just a nice lightly roasted nut is what you want or even better yet, a raw nut. So I have three cups actually of uh, nuts in here. I'm doing a little uh, larger batch for y'all today. Um, and then here I'm going to add, of course, the number one ingredient, ugh, which is oats. So I'm just using raw oats here. I have, keep looking down. This will show you how often <laughs> I've used this, this poor piece of paper. I need to rewrite it. But anyway, we're gonna do three cups of oats. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then to that, we are gonna add three quarters cup of flour. Now I keep all of my ingredients in these large um, containers just to keep, live out here in the country, keep critters out and then uh, also keeps it fresh longer. Oh no, oh yeah, there's, where's my quarter cup measure? Three quarters cups of flour. You're also going to add some baking soda. And let's see, I need three quarter teaspoon, so I'm just gonna use my one teaspoon and just do a smidge less. See, I think that is all to that. Yes. Okay. We'll put all our lids back on and we will start making our sticks out of the way. I'm getting my coffee over here. Can't eat my coffee. Mmm. Smells so good. How do you like your coffee? Are you a flavored coffee? I'm a cream and sugar girl myself. And there. This is done here. Now, to this, we're also going to add some salt. Uh, you don't have to. I do because, again, my trail mix is not salted at all. So I'm going to add a, just a scant shy of a teaspoon, so about three quarters of a teaspoon of uh, using pink Himalayan sea salt, pink, pink Himalayan salt here. Put that there. And then you're just going to mix this up. And then 
here's where you get funky with your ingredients. I like cinnamon, so I'm going to use some cinnamon in mine. You don't have to, but again, I'm going to use about, about a teaspoon. We like a lot of cinnamon. And I'll just mix that in. Mmm, that's so good. I need a little more I like. I've been doing it so long, I kind of smell if it's right. Does it have enough cinnamon? Nope. Let's see now. So maybe a full teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon for this larger 9 by 13 batch here. Beautiful. Okay, so we're done with that. Now, another thing I also like to add in my nuts is some coconut. Um, I enjoy the, the flavor. As you can tell, I'm kind of full. So I'm gonna do about a half a cup. I'm just gonna use my hand to measure. Woo, not a cup now, Melissa, hey. There we go. That's good. Let me put my little thing on there. And then with this, I'm just gonna give it a little zhuzh with the old hand. Okay. Two bowls of dry ingredients. We'll set these aside. Ooh, another sip of coffee taste. Mm -mm. Boy, makes you want to do the Dunkin' Donuts coffee dance. It's so good in the afternoon. Especially on a cold day. Half a cup of butter. I guess you could use sandwich spread or what do they call it? Uh, country crock. Or, I mean, you could, I guess. I don't know. If you use that, let me know. Tell me in the comments below if you don't use butter, if you use like a uh, butter alternative. Um, how they turn out because I'd be curious and We'll put that over there to recycle so I have a cup of butter in here. We're also gonna add honey now. I Hate using measuring cups to measure honey unless I'm using like an oil first And then I do the oil measure in the cup first and then the honey and it slides right out But if you're just doing honey in a measure cup, it's a pain in the tuchus so gotten really good about eyeballing and being pretty correct so that's what I'm gonna do today so we need about three quarters of a cup of honey looks good for my house <laughs> we use a uh, local honey um, here in our area Don pops best honey best 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 honey and I mean it's real honey. So, butter, honey. Yes, we're gonna do some sugar. So I'm gonna do some um, brown sugar, some light brown sugar. And I need a half a cup of that, which is not that much for such a large batch of granola bars. Because you're gonna get quite a bit. Now we're doing the bars, so um, we're not doing like a crumbled granola. That would be just a little bit different of a recipe. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Put that in there. And then, because, oh man, maple, brown sugar, and cinnamon. Oh, that's my favorite oatmeal. So, yep, we're going to add some maple syrup. Right here local in Ohio. And really, I added about two tablespoons full. Last will be the vanilla, but we won't do that until here in just a sec because we're going to take this, put it on the stove on a medium heat, maybe. Nope, that's the back. I'm still learning my stove. Uh, medium heat, let that melt and come to a simmer. That's what we're going to do. And while that's melting and coming to a simmer, I'm going to clean some of this stuff up and drink some more of my coffee. <laughs> and keep an eye on it, of course. Thought I'd bring you in for a little closer look. You can see that it's just starting to melt. I'm going to sit here and keep an eye on her until she comes up to a boil. We just don't want her to burn. Scorch it. That would not taste good. Okay. Keep an eye on her. As you can see, we're starting to heat up. Kind of 
come together. Get my little color change. You want to actually bring it up to a boil, though. You don't want to skip this process. Um, if not, your granola bars won't be bars. They won't stay together as well. So make sure it doesn't stick. Now once you can see it's boiling like this around the edges, see it's starting in the middle, there you go. Now you just want to do a little timer, just a couple minutes here, and just let it boil. You want it to stay boiling even when you're stirring it. You don't want to quite make caramel. Stop before then, that's for sure. Just a couple minutes. You don't want to turn it into caramel. Then you need to take it off the heat. Oh, I didn't think this thoroughly. Let me get my little hot plate. Right here, thank goodness. Take this off the heat. Let's see if we can get you a better look here. Excuse my coffee. That. You can see it's still very much boiling. You just want to let that calm down just a second. And then we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. Again, I'm not measuring. See how it bubbles? If you were to do that on the heat, it could bubble up and over and really scald you because this is sugar. It'll stick right to your skin. So just make sure that's mixed in well. Ooh, smells good. And once you've mixed, we get in my messy drawer now. We'll be looking at my messy drawers. I ain't organized them yet. Anyway, spatula so I can get every last bit of goodness. You're gonna add that to the bowl with your oats and flour and baking soda salt you want to add that first that bowl you get this in here under some water and then you're going to go ahead and just mix up all your goodness about to lose my trail mix over here Try to mix this way so we can see a little better. You just want to mix until all your flour and all your oats are covered. You like to show. Then nuts and trail mix and goodies and with that you're just gonna push and fold you want them to be in with the first mixture but you want your oats to have more chance to absorb the liquid first I had to take a break from my shoulder and my neck um, so that it'll stay together when you cook it oh I busted my tooth <laughs> good lord can't multitask. Mm. Okay, let's try again. <laughs> I could probably use my stand mixer for this, but it would just break everything up. You know, break my almonds up and things, and I really don't want that. Okay, so as you can see, it's really kind of mixed in together. Oh, it's really kind of mixed in together. 
Um, but some of the nuts and things are still kind of loose in there and that's all right. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to try to get it all mushed in right now. Now, we get our baking dish. So, if you wanted to save yourself some butter and things, you could definitely use parchment paper. It is definitely a lot easier to get your granola sheet out and get it cooling and cut. If you have parchment paper, I do not have, I don't think I have parchment paper. I do not have parchment paper, hence why we're doing the butter method. To be honest, normally I use parchment paper, so hopefully this is gonna work. Okay. Now, just dump it all in there. My spatula's too soft. Make sure you scrape all the goodies out. nothing. My bowl was really cold. So when I put that hot in there, it started cooling off on me. Getting hard to scrape out of the bottom of my pan. Look at me making a mess. Oh my gosh. Dress me up. Can't take me nowhere. <laughs> Get back in there. Get back in there. Now you just mush it down in there. You can use your hands if you want. You just want to Fill your, your container, your pan. I try to make it nice and level at this stage. Okay, that way when it cooks, it'll kind of soften up and spread out a little bit, not much. But you don't want to leave it. You want to definitely take your time with this step because this is where you're really forming your bar. You know, you want the everything to kind of stick together and make sure there's not a big nut holding up a piece that it ain't gonna mush. Okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. Now, then I take and just Mush around the edge to try to pull it away a little bit. I'm going to try to save my life and make it a little easier to get out of here by doing this. I hope. That's my plan anyway. That's my plan. I got too many nuts in the corner. Still too many nuts in the corner. Get out of there, nuts. Go on top. Go on top. Top, top, top. There you go. Mm. Mm. Tastes good. Mm. Tastes real good. All right. That's as good as you're going to get today. Yummy. So, once you got it mushed in your pan, stick it in a 350 degree oven, 350 degree Fahrenheit oven, for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, just keep an eye on it. You don't want to get too brown. Middle wrap. I'm gonna set the timer for 20 and I'll check it then. Maybe. <laughs> All right, be back in 20. I'm gonna do some dishes in the meantime and sit down and finish my coffee. Okay, y'all, I'm making sure I'm recording this time. Timer is going off. I actually, uh, set it up. Uh, I've had it 20 minutes. I ended up putting it on for 25. Mm, nummy, 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 nummy. Don't look at my dirty oven. Good Lord. Anyway. Ugh. Oh, look how poofy she got. See how poofy? Mm, nice and golden brown. Nom, nom, nom. Yum, yum. Okay, now for the fun part. So, after you pull it out like that, get my spatula you're gonna come in here and you're gonna deflate it a little bit by just pushing down gently on the top and what that ow I touched the pan with my finger that was hot what that does is that pushes all that granola ow that 
was on it, touched it again, if you couldn't tell. But all that granola mushes it together so that it'll stick and form a bar. Darn that, I burnt like a cockapoo. All right, let me stop trying to focus on what I'm videoing through the phone and actually look at what I'm doing without looking through the phone. I might not burn myself. Anyway, mush it down. Get nice and smooth. Now, if you were going to do anything meltable like chocolate chips or anything like that, you would literally, the way I've done it in the past, is I kind of break this up instead of mushing it down real quick, sprinkle my chocolate chips in, mush it down real quick, this gets very chocolatey, and then sprinkle chocolate chips on top about 20 minutes later. Because if you put the chocolate chips on top now, it's so hot, they're just going to melt into a solid sheet of chocolate. But if that's what you're going for, you can go ahead and do that. For us, this is what we're going for. So, after you mush it down, you're literally going to let it sit here and completely cool. And I mean completely. Not even a little lukewarm. Not warm to the touch. You want it to be completely cool. And when that happens, I will come back and show you how to cut them. And then we'll give a taste test. Can't wait. Look at that goodness. Delish. Okay. We have nice, cool dog granola. As you can see by the time, it took about an hour, hour and 20 minutes to cool off. I uh, did go ahead and take my uh, spatula, which is beveled, um, and go around and break free the edges so that I can flip it out of here. Oh. Try to do this. This way. Butter method worked. Not a bad idea if I do say so. I can tell you it is easier with parchment because you can just lift it out and set it down and cut right on top of the paper. Put that over in the sink. Let me get a towel over here on my counter. Now I'd like to be able to flip this over and cut from the other way. It's gonna, probably going to break. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Another good thing about the parchment paper is, you know, it, you're cutting it with the flat um, bottom part down as opposed to this way I had to flip it over. So hopefully they won't fall apart too bad. The way I like to cut them is I'll go down the middle first and create kind of two halves that are long ways. Now, I'm a weakling, so bear with me. I'll try to keep my line straight. Okay. 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 So I have two halves, and then I'm going to take these halves and then just cut them in bar length, or bar width, I should say. Now, tell me those don't look delicious. Hello? I mean, they're absolutely delish. Good for you. Definitely much better than probably even store-bought because you haven't put all those preservatives and stuff in it, you know? Yeah, it's got a little sugar and some dried fruit, which is also, you know, you still got to eat sugar. It's where energy comes from, at least. It's good sugar. 
you know? So it tastes like that. Mm. I like the edges because they're crispier. The, the middle is a little chewier. Oh, so good though. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I hope you liked today's vlog. As always, thanks for watching. We really do appreciate you. Please take a moment and subscribe, like, and share. Give us a thumbs up. Help our channel out. Last I looked, we were at like 495 subscribers. I'm so happy. I can't even believe it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As always, until next time, have a great day. Mm, I want to eat my granola. I drank the coffee. Mm, mm, mm. Good stuff. Go, Melissa. Mmm.